Taiwan concerned over SpaceX urging for 100% control of Starlink. TSMC foresees no direct impact from China's metal export curbs. 4th of July mass shootings leave 20 dead and 126 injured. China hosts Russian warships that passed by Taiwan and Japan. Nagoya port delays restart following alleged ransomware attack. OpenAI was hit with a proposed class action lawsuit. Hong Kong changes law to slash directly elected council seats. Instagram unveils a threat to Musk's Twitter. I'm Kristen, thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. It is Friday, July 7th, and here are your top stories. According to two officials who took part in the talks with SpaceX, Elon Musk, who owns Starlink, insisted for 100% ownership of Venture in Taiwan. Musk argued he wanted to own the company outright because that's how he's done business in other countries. SpaceX urged Taiwanese government officials to change a law that requires any telecommunications joint venture to have local majority ownership of at least 51 percent. But the Minister of Science and Technology said Taiwan doesn't plan to amend the rules at this point. Bloomberg reported that Musk's significant financial stakes in China worry politicians in Taiwan. Taiwan's Deputy Minister of Digital Affairs, Herming Chua, said, if I'm China, I would ask Elon Musk to control all the satellite receivers in Taiwan. If I can control him, in an emergency I can turn it off. A China space expert at the U.S. Air War College Lincoln Hines agreed that Taiwan has reason to be concerned. He said, could Taiwan really count on the goodwill of Elon Musk in a crisis? Taiwan's TSMC, the world's largest contract chipmaker, said on Thursday it does not expect any direct impact on its production from China's decision to restrict exports of two metals widely used in semiconductors and electric vehicles. Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company said in an email statement, after evaluation, we do not expect the export restrictions on raw materials, gallium, and germanium will have any direct impact on TSMC's production. Taiwan's wind semiconductors, which uses gallium for optoelectric devices, told Reuters only a small number of substrates are purchased from China, with most of its supplies coming from Germany and Japan. Another Taiwanese firm, Visual Photonics Epitaxi, told Reuters it also had multiple substrate suppliers, one of which is U.S. semiconductor wafer maker Axed, which said on Monday it would seek permits to keep exporting gallium and germanium substrate products from China. According to the Gun Violence Archive, a website that tracks shootings nationwide, 20 people were killed and 126 were injured in 22 mass shootings that erupted across the country between 5 p.m. EST Friday and 5 a.m. EST Wednesday. The website which defines a mass shooting as a single event with four or more victims, either injured or killed, reported that the holiday mass shootings happened in 17 states and Washington, D.C., including major cities, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Boston, and Chicago. Uh, around, SPD was notified around 1140 uh, about a shooting at this location on Jones Maybe Street. The president of the Maryland State Senate, Bill Ferguson, said following a mass shooting that occurred at a Baltimore block party on Sunday, this is a societal problem that we're dealing with a mass shooting where a disagreement turns into 28 people shot. This is insanity. This cannot be the society that we are expected to live in. We have to do better. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney said, this country needs to examine its conscience and find out how to get guns out of dangerous people's hands. China hosted two Russian warships that had earlier sailed past Taiwan and Japan and the vessels are expected to hold a joint drill with the Chinese Navy during their visit. Chinese state television reported that the two frigates, Gromki and Silver Shaney, made port calls at the financial hub of Shanghai on Wednesday. Both vessels belonged to Russia's Pacific Fleet. Headquartered in Vladivostok, during their seven-day visit, the ships will conduct naval drills with the Chinese Navy in Shanghai. The same ships, which belonged to the Pacific Fleet of the Russian Navy, passed through waters near democratically governed Taiwan at the end of June. They later sailed past Japan's Okinawa Islands, 
the site of a major U.S. military base, earlier this month. The passage prompted Japan to dispatch vessels to monitor their movements while Taiwan deployed aircrafts and also ships to keep watch over their transit. On Monday, China's Defense Minister Li Shangfu met with the head of the Russian Navy, Admiral Nikolai Yevmenov, in Beijing. After an alleged Russian ransomware attack disrupted cargo packing procedures earlier this week, the Nagoya Harbor Transportation Association said the port of Nagoya will resume operations Thursday afternoon. According to the association, systems at Japan's biggest maritime port were restored at 7.30 a.m., but operations will take longer to recover. The facility was scheduled to resume activity earlier, but the recovery of large amounts of deleted data delayed the process. Japan's biggest Nagoya port resumed operations after suspected Russian ransomware attack. The Nagoya Harbor Transportation Authority said Wednesday the ransomware attack, in which hackers block access to files or systems and demand a payment in return for access, caused the container terminal at the port in Aichi Prefecture to halt operations Tuesday morning. Nagoya is one of several ports globally to be recently targeted by malware. Authorities in Japan say such attacks are on the rise. Last year, a cyber attack on one of Toyota's suppliers in Aichi Prefecture forced it to halt operations at 14 factories. OpenAI, the company behind the viral ChatGPT tool, has been hit with a lawsuit alleging the company stole and misappropriated vast swaths of people's data from the internet to train its AI tools. According to the complaint, the proposed class action lawsuit filed Wednesday in a California federal court, claims that OpenAI secretly scraped massive amounts of personal data from the internet. The complaint alleges that this personal data was also seized by the company without notice, consent, or just compensation. And OpenAI, the creator of the widely used chatbot ChatGPT, is now facing a class action lawsuit in the United States. Timothy K. Giordano, a partner at the law firm behind the suit, said in a statement to CNN on Wednesday that OpenAI put everyone in a zone of risk that is incalculable, but unacceptable by any measure of responsible data protection and use. OpenAI did not immediately respond to CNN's request for comment Wednesday. Microsoft, a major investor into OpenAI, was also named as a defendant in the suit and did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Hong Kong lawmakers on Thursday passed an amendment to a law to eliminate most directly elected seats on local district councils. The last major political representative bodies chosen by the public, shutting down further democratic challenges in the city. The changes include slashing the proportion of directly elected seats in the municipal level organization from some 90% currently to just about 20%, even lower than the level when these bodies were first set up in the 1980s, when Hong Kong was ruled by Britain. Hong Kong has officially passed the District Council Amendment Bill with 88 votes in support. In the the media reported that the rest of the 470 seats will be filled by members appointed by the chief executive, rural committee chairpersons and others elected by local committees that are packed with pro-establishment figures. And all incoming councillors will be vetted by a committee to ensure patriots are administering Hong Kong. A performance monitoring mechanism will be introduced for sanctioning misconduct of councillors. Analysts said the latest amendments would marginalize public participation in the city's affairs. Meta Platform Inc. Instagram officially unveiled Threads, an app designed as a direct rival to Twitter, launching the most serious threat yet to Elon Musk's struggling social media site. On Threads, people can post texts and links and reply to or repost messages from others. The app will let users port over their existing follower list and account names from Instagram, Meta's photo and video sharing app that counts major brands, celebrities, and creators among its more than 2 billion users. But the source of their dispute, Zuckerberg's company Meta, is now entering the ring to take on Twitter. The arrival of Threads marks the first time Meta is releasing a Twitter lookalike. As of the Wednesday launch of Threads, Twitter is still limiting how many tweets per day users can view. 
a measure Musk called temporary, in order to fend off data scrapers and bots. Threads will embark with all those mature company systems in place, thanks to Instagram's existing infrastructure. The app will have the same content rules as Instagram, with the same controls for muting and blocking harassing accounts. Now let's delve into the news of OpenAI being a hit with the proposed class action lawsuit. Number one, allege, to state something as a fact but without giving proof. It is alleged that he mistreated the prisoners. Number two, misappropriate, to take somebody else's money or property for yourself, especially when they have trusted you to take care of it. You are monstrously audacious. How dare you misappropriate public funds? Number three, swath, a long strip of land, especially one on which the plants or crops have been cut. The combine had cut a swath around the edge of the field. And that's all for today's Fun Day News. Be sure to tune in to Fun Day News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Fun Day for free. I'm Kristen, your host. I'll see you next time.